Hey, hey. What people do not see, James, is that while we're waiting to go live and we are in the green, <laughs> I am the only one dancing to the theme tune. Now, what's that about? You're doing a bit of Northern Soul dancing in the green room just now. I was da 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 da. <laughs> so, how, how are you doing, Maria? How's your week been going? Oh, you know, it's just, I can't believe we're already in week three of January oh, yeah. and week when people give up their uh, New Year's resolutions. Let's not go there. Um, no, because, no. Actually, yeah. because this month, this Monday was the one, it was supposedly Blue Monday, and uh, which is traditionally, I think, in Europe. The, the day when it's like the most depressing day of the year. But I found it, I was just reading about it. It's actually something that was invented by a travel company in order to get everyone to book their, their holidays to the warm uh, destinations. The marketing I mean, Blue Monday, it's not a scientific thing, really. It's a marketing, but anyway, we're wearing blue. Fantastic. Well, listen, so we we've got a packed week this week. Shall I tell them or will you? you? Do. I'll tell them, shall I? I think you should so, tell them. Tell us. I should, but you know, I'm going to tell him. I'm very excited. It, it, it's all things digital and social media this week. And hopefully James will be with us uh, and not Dalekey. You're a bit Dalekey today. A bit, your, your, your connection with your snowstorms is a bit, yeah. you know. Um, but we have a very special guest. Shall, shall, we, shall we bring him in? What do you think? Shall I introduce him? Bring him on. Bring him in. Bring him bring into him. the room. Okay. okay. Let's see if I get the name right. It's Alexi. Le Seigneur, that's not easy to say without your teeth in properly, who is the global digital manager at London Speaker Bureau. And we're going to pick his brain and find out some insights as to what LSB do and what we can pick up. So let's bring him in. Hello, Alexi. Hi, Maria. Hi, James. Lovely to be here. It's wonderful to have you. I'm going to see if I can make you big. Let's have a look. I'm going to move you across now because I've made me big. There you go. We'll give you the full screen. How nice is that? Perfect. Isn't it wonderful? It's wonderful. So, listen, Alexi, thank you so much for joining us. Um, James, what, what are you going to ask him first, would you say? Well, I, I was going to ask quickly because you're, you're the all things digital at London Speaker Bureau. So what has the traffic been like over the past you know, few months or during the pandemic? And, and what are you finding just now when it comes to the traffic to the site? Well, um, that's a good question. And um, I think, you know, it's very positive, um, to be honest, um, because we do notice like a, a monthly increase in terms of visitors, um, even despite the fact that, you know, our industry uh, has been you know, impacted by, by the COVID, by like many other industries. But to give you an idea, uh, if we compare 2020 to 2019, um, it's like our lowest level of traffic in 2020 is still higher than the highest level of traffic in 2019. Um, so this is pretty, you know, positive. Um, and I think this is, you know, mainly uh, because of what we do um, as a company and, uh, you know, what we provide. Uh, because I think our clients, you know, and visitors have a great need for guidance um, because, you know, we're expecting a huge period of uncertainty and um, they are, you know, basically looking for answers and they are expecting to get, you know, the right, the right advisors. That's fantastic news, though, I think. I think that's really encouraging to know that there is that much activity going on because sometimes, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're working from home, you're thinking, is there any business? And it's really good news to hear there is business, especially in this industry. You know, we're working in the meetings and events and speaking industry where we have had, you know, we've had a bit of a bashing. So to hear traffic's gone up is fabulous. Now, here's yeah. a question for you, though. In London Speaker Bureau, we know, because James tells us every week, that it's, you know, the global speaker bureau. So it's an international audience you're working with. What challenges does that present for you when you're having to deal with an international audience? Um, well, a lot. First, um, you know, visitors from Asia, you know, won't search the same things that European people, uh, because, of course, you know, there are different markets. So there are, you know, there is different trends. Uh, the topics aren't the same. Uh, I don't know, for example, Asia will be back on track faster than Europe. So they will go back to topics like, I don't know, performance, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, but European will be still back and um, stuck at home. So we'll, you know, have different trends like, I don't know, mental health, uh, you know, the new way of working from home and so on. So I think this is really a matter of, making sure we are always on top of the game uh, and following the best market trends. So this is one of the main challenge. Um, and also having an international you know, traffic um, 
bring um, something which is interesting, which is a bit technical. Uh, but people from Russia, uh, for example, they use Google, Google, but not only. They also use you know other search engine. Um, mm -hmm. One of the main one over there is called Yandex. Um, so it's also something you know we have to keep in mind, and we have to produce you know other content uh, in other languages. Um, so I think this is one of the main challenges uh, we have. So on that, you mentioned this idea of languages, uh, people searching in different ways, they're using, they may be looking, they're typing in different things. Um, do you think it is important then for both bureaus and also speakers, if anyone, any speakers are watching this uh, just now, to have their website in multiple languages? Or is it just fine just to have it in English and then hope that Google or whoever does the, the automatic translation? Well, um First, don't use Google Translate. You know it's useless, uh, especially if you want to. <laughs> to have, I mean, especially if you want to have good results. Uh, <laughs> this is a basic. I mean, you can use it. You know, just for for reading purposes. Um, but I mean, I'm French, um, so you know it makes sense for me to have content. You know, in French and in English. But of course, if you only speak English, I think English is, you know, is fairly enough. Uh, but because we evolve in a you know huge international um, network. We also have to make sure that we have different offers from you know for our clients and for our speakers, and I think this is you know the force of what we what we provide. Uh, this is a challenge, but for us, we I don't think we have the luxury anymore to be only in English uh, because there is business in multiple languages. So I think this is very important. And uh, when you think like everything is digital now, um, it's I think it goes far beyond just the digital side. Um, I think people are reassured to know that, for example, our company and many other you know international companies don't have only people speaking in English. Because let's say you have a customer who doesn't really speak very well English, but they are interested in your services. At least you are sure that you can provide you know the right service for for them, even if if it's in French, in you know in Hindi or whatever. Fantastic, brilliant. Um, and um, of course, I'm half Italian, so I quite like to read in Italian every now and then. And we, we guessed, actually, Alexi, that you were French. You slight giveaway in the accent. You? The accent, you know, like, accent, accent. <laughs> so have you seen any changes in behaviour online from people visiting from your traffic, from social media? Have you seen anything changing? Oh, yeah, definitely, and a lot. And um, definitely even more shifts um with the pandemic because i think people also tend to work differently um maybe you know they use more their smartphones than they used to i mean it's not a surprise to say that we have a huge shift you know from desktop laptop to mobile this is something everyone can notice i mean we spend i think the average the average is about three or four hours a day we spend on our smartphones uh, for an adult um so of course like it's very important to be you know mobile responsive um, but also the time spent on website. I think a lot of people now are used to switch over between different websites and platforms. So I think this is um, something very important and uh, something we have to keep in mind. You know, we, I mean, this is the same for, you know, for our, house, for our chat here. You know, we, I think we don't have the luxury of time anymore. And um, this is a big shift in behavior. You know, we've got to be ultra efficient, straight to the point. Um, but still providing, you know, excellent insights and, and content, which is, I think, really hard when you have to always get to summarize everything. Mm -hmm. mm. That's it. So, you, so you're saying that we're, uh, the attention span is getting shorter. That's having an impact upon how you're doing things. I'm thinking like, you know, when for a lot of speakers, when these speakers that started maybe 10, 20 years ago is speaking, we do those kind of quite, they would do those quite long show reels, like the 30 minute, one hour long show reel. I mean, who's got an hour now? But wow. what advice would you, uh, one hour? So a bit now that like we've got TikTok, we've got loads of other things, like much shorter uh, types of content, a lot more kind of live content like we're doing just now. Have you got any advice, um, Alexi, on what might be the right social media platforms, especially for speakers uh, and those in, in the in more in the corporate in the, in the business side to be focusing on and thought leaders? Obviously, you represent a lot of great thought leaders, great experts. Which one should they really be spending their time? Which ones do you see uh, really delivering results? Well, for me, this is a no-brainer. Uh, my favorite favorite one is definitely LinkedIn uh, for many reasons. Um, but I think um, if I can give you a couple of reasons, like. For students, for example, you know, you can find a job, uh, you can share your resume. Um, for people or employees, um, you know, it's good for their career, 
Uh, you can connect with people, with colleagues. You can also find other jobs. Uh, for speakers, um, and this is you know the heart of what we are speaking uh, about. It's credibility. You know, it's a space for sharing. Uh, you can. It's like online networking, which is basically endless with no borders. Uh, for companies, it's for branding investment, talent attraction, new lead acquisition. Um, I mean, it's endless, uh, and mm -hmm. all of that you know in one platform. So I think this is quite fantastic, and I think this is also why social media is so successful, because social media plays a role for everyone, um, and everyone can benefit from it if you use it, you know, wisely, of course. Um, and I think it was about five years ago when Microsoft bought LinkedIn, I mean, it was a fortune. I don't know if you remember the figures, but it was over $20 billion, the yeah. cost of you know, buying LinkedIn. So this is also why, you know, it's, I think it's really worth it. Mm. Yeah, I've got 20 billion in the bank, haven't you? Yeah, haven't you, James? Quest. Yeah, peanuts. What are, you gonna do, what are you gonna do with the money? There's, there's, there's only, oh. only so, many, so much exactly. chocolate you can buy in a day. Exactly, exactly. So, so listen, um, you're obviously a regular watcher and viewer um, of the show, I, I know, you're a huge fan. Um, and you know that we have a section in the show which we call Tool of the Week. So I, I have to ask somebody who works in digital and clearly has to be very you know, efficient and productive, and also somebody who's considerably younger than myself, what tool would you recommend? Well, um, because this is something we discussed internally uh, a couple of days and weeks ago, um, some, a tool we also want to use more often, uh, especially now, because, well, you know, we use LinkedIn quite a lot. And uh, as, you know, every platform, you know, the algorithm, um, you know, are updating. And uh, a tool I could maybe promote or think about um, is a tool which has been created a while ago, uh, which is called Bitly. Uh, this is basically a tool where you can shorten your URLs, so your links. Um, it's been very used maybe uh, about a decade ago uh, when, or I don't remember when, but Twitter's character limit was 140 characters, which was very short. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a very useful tool when you wanted to share a URL, but you know, a URL can be 30 characters long. So this was a very great tool. Um, but I think now today, uh, many companies, speakers, and others could use Bitly because it brings a lot of accurate data, uh, you know, location, the source of the click, and so on. But also, it allows you, like a brand, to to brand your shortened link. So you you got to to make sure you always have your domain name, for example. So I think this is very important because it it gives quality uh, back to your to your URLs. So maybe you know we could finish this with equations like if you consider using Bitly or other platforms, uh, you need to ask yourself, you know, why do I need Bitly? Is it for data, shortened links, or branding purposes? But I think it's very important, especially for social media, when we share platforms, mm. uh, content on platforms. That's mm. interesting. So, the, 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 so obviously, from a, a social media standpoint, they're looking at, I would imagine it's got a very high um, a PR rating, a, a very strong rating from an SEO perspective, because Bitly has been around for so long, probably higher than most individuals or speakers' websites. I think I've seen, I know Gerd Leonard, who's a speaker from Switzerland, uh, I think he uses, he maybe uses Bitly, but he has his own, I think it's G-E-R-D dot L-Y, Gerdly, I think, or something, it's something like that. So he's kind of using his version, but you can kind of take your branding and actually use the Bitly tool to kind of put your own thing. That's great. That's a fantastic tool, Bitly. And we'll put these in the show notes as well. You love a gadget and a tool, don't you, James? You love, I love it. I love it. Fantastic. So um, let me ask you, Alexia, where should people, if they want to connect uh, with you and also with London Speaker Bureau, where should they be going? Which you mentioned LinkedIn there. So uh, is that the place that they should go and find you and find about uh, London Speaker Bureau? Yeah, of course, you know, definitely go with LinkedIn. Uh, and of course, you know, go check uh, our LinkedIn page. Uh, so London Speaker Bureau page. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be you know, on, the, on the comments. Uh, but please have a look if you want to to get you know fresh insights from our uh, international network. You we are gonna, I mean we have a lot of content uh, which is very timely. So just have a look. Wonderful, wonderful, fantastic. Merci, Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, guys. A bientôt. <laughs> fantastic, <laughs> Alexis.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for com coming on today. So great. I mean, I've got another tool to think about now. Bitly, that's the next, that's the next thing I'm going to have to go for. And another thing. So um, if you, anyone's, if you're watching this live just now, uh, welcome. You're watching This Week in Events, our weekly show. Um, and actually, we were just talking there to uh, Alexi, um, who from is from London Speaker Bureau. So just take, I want to take a moment before we kind of move into our next part, just to give a lovely sponsors today a little thank you london speaker bureau london speaker bureau as we were hearing is a global resource for corporations and governments for keynote speakers executive learning masterclasses and boardroom advisors representing some of the most influential business leaders and politicians in the world named as the only global speaker bureau by international new york times you can find help in choosing a speaker for your next event by going to londonspeakerbureau.com or going to linkedin and going to that page link the london speaker bureau page that alexia was just mentioning Fantastic. That's wonderful. Brilliant. Well, I enjoyed that. And I was waiting to hear you try and pronounce his surname. You didn't, you avoided it, didn't you? I noticed that. Le, le Seigneur. Le Seigneur. I, I, used to, I, I, um, I, was, I was very friendly before I sadly passed away with uh, um, uh, Sasha Distel, the great French oh, wow. singer. You and he used to call up. Yeah, he used to call up our house sometimes. We, would, we were working on a, this deal together. And he used to call up the house. I, I might be at the office. And my, my wife, Alison, would pick up the phone and she would have these long conversations. And she said, I just loved listening to his accent. I could just listen to his accent. So, Sasha, wherever you are, uh, uh, um, just a little name check for you. Fantastic. So listen, I, I think we should, uh, we, we've said in the notes, the show notes, that we're going to carry on talking about social media because it's such a, an important topic for all of us. I mean, literally, I think the whole world and his dog is on social media. Um, and we, we wanted to share, we thought it would be a nice idea because we've both quite active and busy on social media we thought we'd share some tips of what we've learned um because um, you know we're quite we're quite old aren't we now and, and alexi reduced the average age of the show dramatically by coming on um but Thank we're you. quite long in the tooth <laughs> you're still young so, what, so let's, we've got some tips then so uh maria what's your first tip, tip number one we're gonna have six tips here for you and how to use social yeah. media, especially if you're a speaker. So what's your tip number one? My first tip, and I have to say, I didn't always get this right, and I'm still working really hard on it, but be totally clear on who you're talking to. Who is your target? Who Who is your target market? Who is your target audience? Who are you trying to connect with? Because otherwise, Otherwise, your, your, you know, your content is going to be all over the place. It's not going to be accurate and specific and appealing to that particular audience. But also you're going to attract the wrong kind of people. And the idea, of course, is to be social and to, you know, to, to, to communicate. So that's that's really important. Be totally clear on your audience and even make it clear on your profile to say, this is who I'm looking to connect with. This is who I'm looking to work with. This is who I can help or, you know, who can help me. Be quite clear on that. Fantastic, fantastic. So on, on that, because you were talking about being very clear, um, I, I think one of the, the great things that speakers can do if you really want to level up on, on social media is something I learned from working with a lot of my corporate clients where if I start working with them, especially more as an MC than a keynote speaker, I'll ask them to send me their brand book or their brand guide. Um, mm. that just helps me understand like what they're about, who the audience are, as you were just saying, what, how the language that they use when they communicate. And so something you can do pretty simply is actually create your own brand guide, your own brand book. Yeah. And especially if you're working with other people to help you do your social media, it just helps them understand your brand voice and the kind of words you would use and the kind of things you wouldn't say on social media. Absolutely. Really good tip. What's your first tip then? Apart from you've already given a tip there, but what's your first tip? That's not related to my tip. <laughs> well, I was, I, I've stolen, I just stole your tip there and I kind of went on from it. So it's a yes and tip, I guess there. But um, the, the one I would say is, uh, this, this was talked to me by uh, um, James Franco, who's a, who's a great, um, really great on social media and understands mark, online marketing. And he said, think when it comes to social media or pretty much anything you do in business, think about who, not how. Who, mm. not how. And I think especially as entrepreneurs and solopreneurs out there and speakers, where we tend to have quite small teams, we think we have to do everything ourselves. But we don't. You know, this is great. I mean, this week I just hired a new person on our social media design side. And that was just coming from the perspective of like, rather than me do this stuff and sit on Canva, 
let's find someone that can do it. And they're going to do a much better job at it <laughs> than me. So that's my first tip. Sometimes it's who, not how. Fantastic. Fantastic. Here's my second Next tip one. then, for yeah. social media. My second tip for social media, be consistent. Mm. So if you're going to do it, do it consistently. Show up. We show up every Thursday, five o'clock live, suited and booted, whatever's happened in the week. We are here. We are consistent. Um, mm -hmm. If you're doing a podcast, make sure you are consistent and you deliver your podcast regularly. If you are going to be um, sending out, you know, putting something out on YouTube, just be consistent and be consistent in the standard and the way you shop. And that's part of the branding thing as well. But I think the consistency thing, thing is powerful because it takes a long time to become an overnight success. You know, and that is that consistent. Keep doing the work, keep doing the work, keep doing the work. And in 30 years, you too could be a, your overnight success. <laughs> oh, I mean, you're so right. I mean, um, it's a friend of mine who's very big on YouTube, and YouTube's one of those things been around for ages. And he became an overnight success. He's got millions of followers and, and subscribers now. He became an overnight success, I think, in year three. And he was doing two videos a week, uh, every single week, for three years before he really kind of got it, just kind of started to take off. So you're absolutely right, Maria. That, that level of consistency, and I think that kind of applies to lots of different things. I'm still waiting to become an overnight success, incidentally. So if anybody can help me, that would be great. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. What about you? What's your second tip? I would say if, um, I mean, most of us are doing social media in some ways, but if you're thinking from a, a speaker's perspective, maybe you have your personal kind of social media, but you're thinking about creating something more about your your brand as a, as a speaker, I would say focus just on one platform really. Um, and I made this mistake totally at the start. And I still make this mistake all the time as well of trying to be too dispersed. And mm -hmm. you mentioned that consistency, just focusing on one, maybe two. I mean, if I'm a speaker and I think I've asked you this question before, like which ones would be like said, LinkedIn? Absolutely. I think maybe for the, the more consumer focus, if you're more broader, then I'd probably go for YouTube as well. I think YouTube is a natural one, especially for speakers and trainers. So I would, if you're going to just kind of getting started in terms of you building your brand, your speaking brand online, I would just say focus on one platform. I'm very tempted to ask you now because obviously the whole world is talking about Clubhouse. Have you ventured into Clubhouse? Have you dared? No, I've actually I, I've got all this stuff. Loads of people have said to me about Clubhouse, about joining it. I might get in. I I um, yeah, I, it might be something I'll look at. But then I'll it's the, it's like what's it called? Sun sunset clauses on contract or, or those kind of. I if I feel if I spend time on that, I'm going to have to get rid of something else. I don't want to add yeah. just more yeah. stuff. So what have yeah. you, Maria? Have you started really being active? I on it and getting... no. I reserved my my name and that is all I've done um, yeah. because I'm not allowed to do anything more than what we planned to do this year. Because I, will, I, will, I always overload the team and they no, no, just focus, focus, focus. Your, and your theme, Maria, for this year, I think you mentioned last week, is simplify. Simplify. Yeah, so I'm, not, so I'm, I'm a magpie. Yeah. Sorry? You're an I'm intellectual a magpie. magpie. You're an intellectual it's, magpie, it's, which it's I love. Shiny. Thing, if it's a shiny thing, I want it. And Clubhouse keeps calling to me, and I'm going, no, 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 because I will just get distracted. And and also, I've got, you know, you've got to manage your energy. I think, haven't you, as yeah. well? And it's it is it is we're busy. Anyway, so my my last tip, uh, actually, and it sounds ridiculously simple. And do you know what? I don't do enough of it. I don't think many people do enough of it. It's social media. Engage engage mm. and it's not anti-social media it's social media so you know be respectful be nice be kind help each other but communicate if somebody responds to a post that you've put out there have the decency to either thank them or, or talk to them and you know and so look, I've got to engage now because I've got people saying hello Maria so that's Karen hello Karen um, Arthur is saying consistency is key uh, Ty said good day so you, I've got to engage because I've got to do what I say I'm going to do right so that would be my final tip to or engage with people. Yeah. Don't just connect for connection's sake, but have some meaningful conversations. And I think this is where it's a little bit different, especially if we think about um, thought leaders or celebrities or that. Where previously the the role of the big film studios was always to keep. In fact, if, partly actually the role of the part of the job of the bureaus used to be to have that wall in front of that that famous person. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because that's kind of breaking apart. 
And and so I think a lot of both speakers and also film stars and musicians have decided they can have a more direct relationship with their, their fans and the people that they want to be able to influence. And they don't have to go through that. And they can be a little bit more open. Now, how how more, much open you want to be, I think that's a, a personal decision. And that kind of comes back to the brand thing, I guess, as well. Um, I think we've got Karen just asking here, talking about giving feedback. We've got Ty and Arthur and Karen. Good to see you here, Karen. Um, so Karen was just asking, I'm going to let you ask, answer this, Maria, because you're the person that's controlling all of this, all being done by Maria from the back for here. Which tool are we using for this live broadcast? Is it Zoom or something plus something else, or what are we using? No, we're using StreamYard. So we're on StreamYard at the moment, and we are using Ecamm Live virtual cameras. And the reason we're using virtual cameras is so that we can have – because we're not really in front of these buildings and in front of this is not really the view from my window. I'm sorry to you know disillusion everybody now. I've just ruined I've ruined it all, I know. Ah. Um, but in order for us to have our green screens and our backgrounds, we need to use a virtual camera which is Ecamm Live. Um, otherwise we did, we wouldn't necessarily need that, but Ecamm will allow us to do other stuff too. Um, so we're using Ecamm Live with StreamYard. There you go. Oh, and Karen, Karen, just, Karen oh, she, was, she was a guest on, a, on my podcast right at the very start. We were talking about consistency. Like, I think she was probably at episode like 50 or 60, and we're like 300. And um, Karen's really interesting. Karen's background is in cybersecurity, understanding all that world and ha the ethical hacking. And uh, fan so check out uh, Karen Elizari. She's a, she's a speaker. I'm going to give you a little hat to kind of mention oh, there as well, okay. uh, Karen. There so, yes, yeah, art, and it's, it's really good. And in fact, I think. I think we're going to probably try something new soon. Hopefully, I did this. I was doing it this week. We don't, don't say power. anything. Okay. Don't say I'm, anything. I'm, I'm not to say anything. Okay. You, know, you cannot keep a secret, James. And know, you know I'm this terrible. is dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. I should be I'm having terrible. a word with you. <laughs> now, listen. Um, what's your yes. final tip for social media? So my, my 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 final tip on social media is, frankly, you don't have to do any of it. Yeah. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, I, I, I'm, I follow lots of people in different fields in the arts and sciences and business. They don't do any of this stuff. You don't have to do any of it. And I think once you kind of go from that perspective and go from a more minimalist perspective coming into it, it's great to experiment, but you don't really have to do any of it uh, unless you want to, unless it feels aligned with your brand. So, and I think then you have to decide from a, must be in a branding standpoint, if you're a top economist, uh, maybe going on TikTok and doing like funny dancing videos, it's maybe not, maybe it's going to make you stand out. Maybe, maybe it is fine. It's on brand for you. Um, but I think you have to kind of think about what you're trying to do and who your audience is kind of going back to what Maria said at the start there and really feel does it have integrity with, with what you're about? Because frankly, most of these things will be gone in a few years time anyway, uh, in terms of individual platforms. So uh, I would be trying to spend a little bit more time on, on creating stuff rather than necessarily always the, the communication and the, the marketing and the promotion of it. Wow. They're, they're going to be gone, James? Have, do you know something I don't know? Really? They're all gone. <laughs> you know, on MySpace, I, I was a big MySpacer at the start. They, they're all gone. It's all like it's like empires. They all go up and then they come down. That's that's the way it. That's oh the way my it is. goodness! Oh yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. Cool. So anyway, so those are the tips that we've shared. Um, yes. We've got to do our tool of the week as well, haven't we? Yes, we do. So yeah, I think you should go first with your tool because I was very. I, I'm, I'm thinking about it just now after you told me about what your tool of the week is. Oh, okay. I'm not going to show you the tool of the week because it's going to be too difficult because I'm going to blind you with lights. But my, okay. I've had some really bad neck ache recently, and I use a, an iMac on my desk, and my desk goes up and down, which I've shared with you. But I do. I don't want to stand all day. I like to sit, and when I'm sitting, I get this neck ache. So I got myself mm. a a riser, a, 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 a simple. It's about this high where I can put my computer onto it and raise it. So I've raised it. And now I'm sitting straight, back straight. And oh. now, I'm getting, I'm now I'm getting other aches. <laughs> but at least I should be able to hopefully get rid of my neck ache and, um, and that will help. And I'm sure it's much better for me with That's my good. posture. But, yeah, so it's Have a good stand uh, specifically designed for, for an iMac because iMacs are reasonably heavy. Have you ever done Alexander Technique, Maria? Have you ever heard We've about talked that? about this before, and I haven't. No, I'll tell you yeah. what it is, James. I'm not going to the gym enough. I, I, we built a gym. Oh, no, it's not. It's, and it's, I need it's, to it's exercise. Not. I need to, yeah, yeah. to strengthen my core. 
Yeah, no, I because I just see actually I notice a lot with speakers as well. A lot of them get the same problems. Uh, like all, all the motivational speakers, it's usually their their knees that start mm -hmm. to go and their hips and and sitting down flights probably for so long. But uh, Alexander technique is fantastic. A lot of musicians and people in dance and theatre use it just to understand their body. And I never realized just how heavy your head is, like in terms oh, of really? the sheer weight of it, and just by that moving forward. A little bit and uh, it's good to so check out there was a company i did some stuff with recently and every single employee that starts that company get a free alexander technique session with it with an alexander specialist just to help them get their posture when they're working at sure. their yeah. nice. oh, brilliant thank you very much brilliant there you go. what's your tool what's your tool app or gadget what have you got so i've got a slightly different one normally we don't talk about books and i've realized as i picked up this book it's not going to show so let me Is i'm going to show it you're not going to see it because uh, it's, it's, it's a green skin. cover. <laughs> no, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's, it's, it's a green cover. <laughs> anyway, it's called Nomad Capitalist. And it's by a gentleman called Andrew Henderson. Um, probably, you know, you, you would have seen like the, all the Tim Ferriss, the four-hour work week stuff, which is that first type of, like, the kind of uh, digital nomads when people could work and live from anywhere. Great. But now that we've gone through this pandemic, this idea of being able to work and live from anywhere is now available to lots more people that work maybe for bigger companies. So there's, it's really about is how to reclaim your freedom with offshore bank accounts, dual citizenships, foreign companies, and overseas investments. So it's really about how to be much more of a global citizen. And to think about it, you basically go where you're treated best. So you domicile your company, you you domicile yourself, you spend time in those places where you're treated best, which is not always your home country where you're born. It's a little bit like if you've ever heard of the three flags that you should have maybe your citizenship of one country, your country, your company should be situated in another, maybe lower tax um, country, and then maybe you spend a lot of your time in a third or, and a fourth country because you have really good quality of life there. It's called a three flags. And I think when we start to now go back, I think especially for speakers, but also for our clients and a lot of people, that, executives, this idea about being really now truly global citizens, being able to work from anywhere, to live from anywhere, and to organize your affairs, your business affairs in a kind of smarter way, I think this is going to be a bigger, bigger trend. Nothing to do with Brexit then? Not at all. <laughs> Nothing to do with Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> not at all not at all okay i should check that out that's very interesting and certainly the, the what is very appealing at the moment uh, is to go somewhere warmer because we're having a very wet and very cool i know you've got snowstorms which is why your yeah, we have. internet is, this, is a bit flaky but it's cold it's wet and we could do with some sunshine couldn't we absolutely yeah. there's actually there's a, I, what i was reading just today there was, there was a country one of the caribbean countries is now you can get citizenship that's like fifty thousand dollars uh, citizenship um, but you do have to spend I think it's like 60 days or 90 days in the year on this Caribbean island um, awful. oh that's awful I don't know if I could do that <laughs> yes go, go yeah. check it out send me, send me a link I should be applying brilliant so okay. all, all the things we mentioned today uh, Maria if anyone's watching this just now and you want to go and check out the links that uh, Lexi was talking about the, the links that the Maria for, for her tool the link to the book, The Nomad Capitalist, just go to thisweekinevents.com and your details there, and you'll have the links for all for this show, as well as all the previous shows. You can check out some of the previous episodes. Lovely jubbly. Well, listen, it's been lovely to see you, James, as always. Right. Have a no lovely worries. rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank, and thanks for watching. And my name is James Taylor, keynote speaker on creativity, innovation, and artificial intelligence. And listen, I, you know, I've, I've got my fame now after 30 years. I'm now, you know, I've got, you know who I am. <laughs> you know who you are. Everyone knows Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Stay well, everyone. Bye-bye.